Hello, I'm Lene Rhodes, owner of Mix Cosmetics. I make custom organic makeup, skincare, and body care. I use all natural ingredients. I use things sourced from the planet. And unfortunately, the planet is in a little bit of distress right now. And so somebody asked me a few weeks ago about climate change and how it's affecting the ingredients that I utilize. And there are definitely changes in my business, but I've tried to stay ahead of the curve that I am not struggling to find ingredients. I'm using things that are sustainable, that are going to continue to be sustainable because of the way they're sourced or the way that they grow. So I talked about rose hip and cranberry and roses and rosewood and olive oil. And this week I want to talk about cocoa butter and beeswax. So cocoa butter is obviously from the cacao plant, from chocolate. And so chocolate has become extremely popular. I mean, really, why not? And they are, they're very protected. They're grown extremely well. They're gr being grown sustainably by these small farms that have to take very, very good care of their land to produce cacao to the best of their ability. They have to have quite a bit of rainfall and they have to have good soil drainage. So there ha it has to be really fertile. It has to be loamy. It has to be uh, not fertilized, but actually mulched. And cocoa, cacao trees grow in the shade of other larger trees like mango. And so you grow mango or jackfruit or some of these other larger trees. And then you grow cacao underneath that. Well, I use mango butter. It's one of my main butters that I utilize in almost every single product. If you look on my product ingredient list, you're gonna see mango almost everywhere because it's grown sustainably, it's being grown as a main food and fruit source, it's being grown as a shade source for cacao, which is on these, on these farms, these fair trade farms that are producing this amazingly beautiful cocoa powder and chocolate. So what they do is they take the butter out of the cacao. This is actually, if you get a really, really excellent white chocolate, that this is what it should be made of. So it should be made of cocoa butter, a little bit of milk or milk solids, some um, sugar, and that's about it really. And so you should get if you're getting really good white chocolate, it should have some cocoa butter in it. But they also take a lot of the cocoa butter out. It's not necessary in cocoa powder. And so they sell it to us and we can use it in our body care products. And it is wonderfully moisturizing and grown in a sustainable, safe, healthy way for the planet. Of course, there's no, there's no doubt that they will experience some kind of an event, some kind of climate change event at some point. There will be flooding, there will be tsunamis, those kinds of things. So cocoa can be affected, but it's not being affected in the same way as plants that are grown in drier areas. And it's not being affected by the fact that so much soil has been completely depleted because it, the soil has to be really well cared for to grow a healthy cacao plant. So that's one that should be somewhat immune to climate change. And then beeswax. We know that the bees are really struggling and really suffering in a lot of places around the world. I'm super lucky that I get my beeswax from local farmers right here in town. And so they know exactly how much beeswax their bees need every single year to survive. And so they can harvest beeswax and sell it to small indie makers like me. Now there's no way they could provide for Revlon or Palmolive or Johnson & Johnson. There's 
just no way that there would be enough beeswax for a company like that. So it's kind of nice to buy from indie makers because we do have access to these local ingredients and we're willing to pay more oftentimes for our ingredients that we will go to find these local farmers and growers, people who grow sustainable fair trade cocoa to get our cocoa butter or people who have small bee farms apiaries, at whatever, small harvests of beeswax every year that we can get beeswax from. So it's nice to be able to support small and local because oftentimes it is so much more sustainable. We're not even getting these um, carbon emissions. If you're buying local, you're not having the carbon emissions from shipping that you would have if, say, you purchased from Target or Walmart or Walgreens and they have to get their product, which is made in China or Vietnam, and it's shipped over here to the US and it's put in a warehouse somewhere. And you know, here, let's say it's put in a warehouse in Chicago because that's an upper Midwest. And then eventually, okay, the Walmart here in Duluth runs out of their thing. And so people, so then it's shipped up from the warehouse to, to Duluth, to the Walmart. And if you buy local, it's just you driving to the store to pick up the thing that was made at the store or at somebody's house. And that's all the carbon emissions there are. It's just you driving to the store. Maybe you're running a couple errands, so not even a big deal. So it's kind of nice to find ways to support local, to limit the carbon emissions, and also to support the downstream farmers that provide for us as well. So I hope this has helped this whole series on climate change and my ingredients and what I'm using and why I'm not doing certain things and why I am doing certain things. If you have other questions, as always, I love to hear them. I love to answer them. And it makes me think always about what I'm using and how I can do better. So we will talk to you soon. Have a great week. Thanks for listening.